Hey guys, welcome to the B stream. We have like um, upcoming purple versus cipher. Um, yeah, I mean cipher and purple are both known tournament players. We have um, cipher on the paladin warrior priest and pur uh, purple on the warlock mage and priest. And the druids got banned from both players. How are you feeling about the series, Kixer? Are you excited? Hmm? I guess, yes. Uh, freeze Mage was really strong in last year's standing. Mm -hmm, I guess. Basically, no way Cypher opens his Warrior because he would just lose if that Warrior doesn't queue into Freeze Mage and loses the game. So. Purple now basically knows that Cypher will either start with Paladin or Priest and can expect that and try to counter that, for example, by starting with Mage. Yeah, he definitely has a second warrior. It's really important. Um, just play three quiet. Mm. Maybe make the mi microphone a bit louder. Uh, let's see. But should be fine by now. Yeah, yeah, it's better now. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. B both really good tournament players. I'm. Uh, it's pretty surprising. Like both players are bringing priest, um, but purple might have the edge of. I mean, hmm. I just think that both people like expect paladin to be a um, very popular deck and think that priest has a good matchup against it. Mm -hmm. Paladin is really strong at the moment. Just curve out well. Maybe yeah, something I mean good fell in action. Mysterious Challenger is a pretty good card. Yeah. I mean, can even run a slower version to make it better against Druid or um, <laughs> Warriors with Alder Peacekeepers. Like, there's uh, so much um, um, tech um, cards now in the um, new Secret Paladins. Can and make it might have everything. fallen asleep and forgotten to start spectating. Oh, yeah. So we're already in the game, right? Yeah. On turn four. Cypher's playing the Paladin against Purple's Warlock, which is Demon Handlock. So we have, like, um, I guess, standard mid range Paladin with equality here against Demon Handlock. Um, and Purple on the Demon Handlock and Cypher on the Paladin. Is, uh, yeah. And we see Purple having all the demons, so in case Cypher chooses to trade into the Void caller, it could be either Doomguard, Magennis, or Jarexus coming out. Um, so, <laughs> I guess Doomguard would be fine. Jarexus is also okay. I mean, um, Cypher just has the answers, right? With Equality and BGH. It helps a lot. Oh, yes. Uh, this matchup is kind of hard to play. Like, um, you have really to watch out as the mid range pattern how low you want to bring him and um, watch out for a tempo turn. But with a quality Consecrate, you can basically play this game a, a bit more aggressive. Yeah, but you can also just play, in order to play aggressive, play Peacekeeper and just ignore the threat. You could Peacekeeper Hero Power here and just go face for seven damage. Mm -hmm. The issue is that you're always like expecting a taunt to come down in order to make the 1-8 Giant still get some value. Mm -hmm. No, no, the first kind, the uh, first time I see that rope back. Mm, what do you think is like the? I mean, the elder seems fine here. Uh, I don't think you got quite have. Um, yeah, you could also like just true silver. I like both lines. The elder is a bit more aggressive. Uh, it's like a rope back there in the spectator mode. Yeah. 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 Like. The bug just ended because a normal rope started, but there was like the rope going on all turn long already. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like this happens from time to time. So, um. oh, I'm pretty now sure it's gone. Purple will try to find a time to play one mode and then save a second to play around equality. Mm -hmm. But without any taunt giver, he can't. Just how, how, what does he have there? Doom guard. So, uh, we yeah. will probably see the Watcher attack a giant into the Divine Shield. Then a Shadow Flame on the Ancient Watcher, now to just so get the I board mean, clear. I mean, getting a Taunter is like 
super important here for the handlock. I mean, he gets tempo with the Emperor Forestan, but the Paladin, if he... You can't just, just go all face here. Is it a lethal? No, it's one damage off, um, uh, I think. Yeah, but I think you, ju you just um, embrace this mark. How do you do that? By playing Trusa or by playing Consecration, Coin, Cockhammer? Uh, Probably server to save consecration for the equality exactly exactly i think so mm. but you could also just coin dr boom that's a pretty good card mm. yeah but doesn't you want to finish the handlock now right like as fast as you can and i think if you play dr boom you give him like maybe an additional turn right dr boom has like a battle cry that deals eight damage to your opponent's face yeah mm. i guess i i, I think it the quality just swings it so much into the Paladin's favor here is insane. Um, <laughs> I don't agree with this trading though. Like, is it necessary to trade here? I mean, he probably expects something like, I don't know, Big Game Hunter Shadow Flame or maybe Healbot Shadow Flame since we saw Emperor come down. Mm -hmm. So, after Emperor, it's always hard to predict what your opponent is going to do because. With a reduced hand, there are so many possibilities that you are pretty scared. I mean, Purple has still the problem. He just doesn't have um, a taunter. Yeah, but he has a Doom Guard, so you can just drop the Doom Guard, hit face for six damage, and start the race. Hmm. Can't even play Big Game Hunter before he does that. Shadow Flame, the Big Game Hunter here? Probably, he uh, might also play him the Ancient Watcher. The, the Boombots are still... Yeah, you might play the uh, Moltens before. I think you only play one Molten. Oh. I guess you, it's kind of hard because you also want the Moltens to um, soak up the Boombot damage. I think that's fair enough here. But you have Jirexes for next turn. Yeah. So... You only play on 4 damage if the uh, Paladin has only 7 mana because 2 Silver is basically the most he can do. He can 2 Silver and Consecrate. So unless Boombots sit face for more than four damage, so five or more, you mm. don't really care. So oh, he even taps here. Um, it's not quite lethal still. So what is the what is the line? What is the right line here? I mean, it has to be a quality consecrate. Yeah, yeah. And then but then the Jirexus is pretty good. Yeah, it might be an issue with um, just Cypher played this too slow one turn ago because he gave him the additional turn to make it actually. Uh, a comeback for the handlock. Yeah. Yes, maybe he was too scared of Emperor, but I can understand him. Emperor is a pretty scary card. I mean, yes, but just make him trade Emperor, otherwise he dies, right? Yeah, but he trades into a big game hunter, so he says alive on 1 HP, or gets shadow flamed. I mean, we have the Argus and every turn is 6 6 Infernal Vet. That's what I call impactful. I yeah, think you hero power, play your watcher and Argus. That way, your <laughs> hero power token is a 7 7 and doesn't die to the divine shield of um, the Tyrion. So. Yes, I mean, there is no owl, but the handlock just. He, he will draw into the taunters now. If there are like three more taunters left and one in his hand, it's like. It's not looking too bad suddenly, although the pattern had all the answers in the hand. Actually, we might see. What? Purple play Molten Giant. It's pretty weird because... What, Molten? I mean Mountain Giant. Yeah. It lets <laughs> Cypher trade Divine Shield for the uh, Infernal. Mm -hmm. but on the other hand, it's probably your last chance you could play the Giant. Now he goes Watcher Argus. I like it a lot. Or is it just a Void Call to get a Doom Guard out? Yeah, he tries to get Tempo back. It's so valuable. If he... Like, if the Handlock stabilizes after Jiraxis, it's like so, so huge. No, but he will take probably 8 damage from the Cockhammer at the Tyrion attack now. Is he going to Cockhammer though? Yes. I mean, what you could do is say, where, where is no Taunter, go with the True Silver Face, and as soon as you get the Ashbringer, you have Lethal next turn, maybe with the Owl even. Just go, just but go. You just like saw your opponent play a Dark Bomb, yeah, just, just to get rid of the Divine Shield, so you know that it's hard for him to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So you want to trade uh, Tyrion? No. I mean, I trade with the HP of Jarexus. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a super hard turn here. Um, 
So, he, I mean, if he plays Shredder first, he's not going for the core camera, right? I mean, he gets another taunt, maybe. Mm -hmm. But he probably plays two silver and just hopes for no taunt and no heal, which is probably a good call. So, let's see. The Watcher is okay, but not, not really what he needed. Yeah, we see Owl and Cypher Sand, which will probably have huge impact next turn. But is it enough? Because Purple will get Double two taunts. Yeah, it's like really good. He might even just taunt up the Watchers here. I don't think he plays around a second equality and just also maybe sets up Lethal with a good top deck. So can you explain to me why Purple choose to um, play his, I mean, trade his Doomguard into a 2-3 instead of just tanking 2 damage on a Zero? Like, in what case does it make a difference if you're on 3 or fi 5 HP when your opponent already has 5 damage weapon anyway? So if it connects face, you're dead and there's already one Consecrate out. Maybe so Hammer of Wrath? <laughs> 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 okay, so you have to play the Knife Juggler and hope that one of the Taunt minions um, I mean, that would have made a difference if you would have had like my knife juggler into token into consecrate, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I still don't like it. I think you might give your opponent another extra turn, which is. I mean, you just want to go face. I mean, it w <laughs> look at that, man! Like, come on. Juggler always goes face. The more you know. I'll, I think it's fine. Do you have to play Kokama now just to get the taunt? Mm. Otherwise, you die, right? Yeah. Um, you get the taunt, but you're still dead. No. Ah. Oh. Attack, attack. He's too off lethal, man, right? Yeah, so let's see. <sighs> Actually, even though it's j two damage off lethal, Argus wouldn't Ah, there we go. That's Iron Beak. Nice. SM Mark. Um, insane match. It was like super favorable for the Paladin. He had like all the answers. But I yeah, think but he played the game of answers instead of. Going for the proactive play and just hitting him in the face. Yeah, I would. I agree there. I think the Paladin is just like the more aggressive player there, right? And um, he had the answer, so you might as well go face. Why not? Um, so, so Purple will stay on the handlock, and Cypher will either have to play the Boria or the Priest. Okay, and both those options are, mm, I don't want to say bad, but let's say terribly. Because if you go for the Priest, you usually don't win against Handlock, so it's like not even an option. But if you go for the Warrior, you are forced to just 3 over the Warrior because if you beat the Handlock, mm -hmm. Purple will switch to his. Wait. He also has Priest left. So you'd have to win Priest against Control Warrior. It's g you, have to, you have to just go with the um, Warrior here because the Priest versus Handlock is just such a hard matchup that you almost never want to play it, right? Yeah, the issue is that like, if Warrior gets eliminated, then I'd say like... It's over. 120% of the time, Priest may twins against Priest. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, the Handlock is insane against Priest, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but... This is like the most important match of the series for Cypher, I guess. Yeah, and... If Cypher wins this game, the whole series will come down to the next match. The next match would be Control Warrior against Priest, mm -hmm. and whoever wins that game will basically yeah, will be guaranteed to win the series because it would mean that in order to not win the series after that, it Warrior would either have to lose against Freeze Mage, or Freeze Mage would have to. Uh, yeah. Um, Wait, no. I mean, we, we kind of struggle there. I, I just keep it like that. I think we we'll just uh, say like this, the, the warrior is really important for Cypher to keep him up. Otherwise, the priest will just not get a win in. I think we <laughs> keep it easy there, right? Um, so, I mean, the warrior has a really nice hand. Just and Curve, Belcher and Curve, it's really nice. But, on the other hand, um, Purple has a lot of rats in the hand, huh? Um, so... He can go for Shield Slam on the Drake. Doesn't seem too appealing, though. I, I, I guess you just dropped the Belcher there, right? It's, I mean, if you play it, you might see an Argus or an attack at a Mortal Coil. So, since you don't really have an answer to a 4-6 or Drake or whatever it would be after that, I think you have to kill it. 
goes with the giant. Um, I don't Cypher. think you want to leave a giant up. Um, the addition for Cypher here is that he doesn't really have a way to enable execute while not being super inefficient. You don't want to use bash just to enable execute. Mm -hmm. So we might see unstable ghoul acolyte so he can execute next turn instead. Um, but I think you have to bash it, right? Even though it seems like super inefficient. I don't know, maybe Unstable Good Acolyte is better, because that way, if your opponent doesn't use an Iron Weak Owl, your Acolyte will get two dwarfs most likely, mm -hmm. and even if he does, the Iron Weak at least dies to the death rattle of Unstable Ghoul, and it enables Execute on the Giant for next turn. So I really wouldn't be surprised to see those two come down this turn. Just go for the well you play, yeah? I like it, seems fine. Um might get punished by the Iron Big Owl from the opponent's side, or even a Dark Bomb, um, but I don't think you can go with the Bash Blade. It's just so inefficient, and especially in this match. Hmm. I mean, I think he's setting up the Bash on the Giant, but still, he gives the Warlock an Avatar. Oh. Like, this is one of the turns where Lothab is, like, super strong. And I like it a lot. Like, Purple is just protecting his board really efficiently here from, like, spells like Execute or Brawl. Yeah, I think Brawl is the most ex scared of because Execute will trade one for one at some point eventually anyway. But you can't really just Brawl next turn because if you Brawl next turn, you take, like, 16 damage. Exactly. Before that, so... It's like... I think a low flip, like a, uh, as good as it gets, you have a giant on the board, a good death rattle minion, and a 5-5 five five now. Like, in this matchup, as the Warlock, you're the aggressor, right? So you, this low flip is like really good. I'm still surprised we didn't see Acolyte and Unstable Ghoul come down, but he might also be scared of a Shadow Flame on Voidcaller. Iron Big Owl here is really good. Just uh, efficiently he deals 7 damage and also um, gets rid of the Armorsmith value. Yeah, it's he is on 8 cards now. Mm -hmm. So he does want to have the option to tap next turn, so he didn't want doesn't want to use something. So I think he'd rather play a threat than the Owl, but since he didn't have a threat, the Owl is definitely better than nothing. I mean, what Purple is doing here, he's just... Setting the warrior under so much pressure that he has to use his removal more inefficiently. Um, and that is really important for him. I like it a lot. And Cypher is kind of running out of good removal or efficient ways to remove yeah, the ball. Yeah, Cypher has to be really sad that there's no ball in his hand. Because with a ball, you can attack your sludge into the void caller, force um, purple to play another minion off his hand, mm -hmm. and then you ball for three enemy minions. So. It's probably the best it would get for him, but he didn't pick it up yet, so he kind of has to play his card draw and hope to get it as soon as possible. Executes the Void Call. No. Oh yeah, he slams a bash. Execute now. Promise, like, will he ever get value from this cool Acolyte? It, it seems of, uh, it was kind of too slow this turn and too risky against like a Dark Bomb, so he has to wait an other turn. Maybe he's just setting on the Ysera value here. I mean, back in the day, like one or two years ago, every handlock was wanting two copies of Siphon Soul. Mm -hmm. But since that's not really the case anymore, Ysera is a lot harder to deal with, especially now where you have seen Purple play the, his Owl already. I mean, what we see here is like super well played by Purple. Like the positioning of the drag and protecting the death rattle is like really important. It gives the warrior almost no out to efficiently clear the board. And we see Cypher, since he didn't want to play his Accolade earlier, just kind of stuck in the sand because from now, like going onwards, Ooh. he probably will never have the time to cycle Accolade. So. He gets his Sarah Awakens and already has a Grom in the hand. That might swing around the game, hmm? Yes. Something you might not play around if you're purple. It's so good because it just clears the board and its potential for 15 damage burst. Smart. Yeah, but right now if he would play it, he would have to trade a sludge and his weapon into the drake. Mm -hmm. So it would be 15 plus 4. Whoa. Whoa. So. Unless he trades. Oh. 
He got the Doom God. That but. is insane. Is this just lethal? I don't think so. No, he oh, he plays around the way. Even if he like didn't that. trade, because it's lethal now, right? He just attacks with a weapon and um, Gromis are oh, awakened. Game right. over. Haha. -ha. Yeah. I this was so. like, I mean, the only. S wow. Yeah, that was a lot of him. Like, looking at this turn, when you saw the turn, uh, the game one turn before, still wanted to go his way. He had to get awakens. He had to draw his uh, Grom. And he basically needed his opponent to deal damage to himself by playing the um, Jaraxxus. Mm. So, quite a fortunate yeah. series <laughs> of events <laughs> for Cypher. Did a board 15 damage burst? Yes. <laughs> yeah, was, I don't know, like this swing around from the Awakens? Hell yeah. That's what you want to see. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, Wait, we, we see Purple not play Freeze Mage. So Purple? Is on a tempo mage. Um, that might change things up. Okay, but like the most important question, we see one gold and one non-golden, um, unstable portal. Which one do you play first? Um, always the golden one, right? I mean, there's a chance you get a bad minion, you just have to play, and then it dies, and then you lost the golden card. I mean, you, you might you always kind of want to start with the scientist to cycle secrets out of your deck. Yeah, but next turn. He doesn't have a golden mad scientist. There's nothing to talk about this turn. But next turn. Do you play the golden one or the non-golden one? <sighs> kind of hard. Do you want a golden legendary or not? I think you play the non-golden one to have the golden legendary for like turn 4 or turn 5. So we have now... Uh, the mana bomb oh. is kind of really good. So you just Draw the curve, place the golden unstable portal, and get okay. an ogre. I don't quite understand that card. And it's it's eight five. I don't the spectator mode is weird. The six mana is green, but that would be the non-discounted price. With a discount, it's three mana. But still, the card to me seems quite weird as a card because a six mana eight five mm -hmm. isn't really that good. I don't think it would see play as it is and then it has the downside on top of that i mean it hits for eight six what can we say about that wow okay but it's for six mana just compare it to you're not liking this card i can't see this like eight damage for the face for six i would play stalag instead of that oh it's just seven damage yeah but it yeah, it's one less mana and the effect is a lot better uh. getting an 11 11 is better than 50 percent chance to hit the wrong target i thought you were into ogre six six so i failed um, so, uh, you just yeah, I think this is really important from the warrior side here. Um, you just want to cl um, clear the board from a temple mage because a mana worm can grow really fast. Adding a flame waker maybe makes it uh, even more dangerous. Yeah, we we'll probably see him play some stable portal, and unless he gets a better minion of that, play his ogre. But <laughs> he can always ping his own acolyte if he feels like doing that. This this warrior seems really greedy. You have like Nefarian. Um it seems like he wants to trade, but if he trades, that means he won't play any RNG effect. So that means he either plays Shredder or Mad Scientist and his Ogre. Which I mean the problem for the warrior, I mean the the brawl is kind of really good here, but there's two death rattles on the board. He will get the second entity out. I guess he plays two entities. Yeah, uh, it's most likely. Yeah. I mean but the brawl is a really efficient answer to an acolyte of pain because it doesn't take damage. I it's a good card, six though. But yes, if you have a five of that, just I mean six of that reliably wins the brawl. Eight damage face more. What can we say about that? Which that's like really nice. <laughs> uh. Wow, yeah. this mana rough wow. No boom this turn, I guess. What do you play? Slam. You just take another, f another eight, obviously, here, right? You probably have to. <laughs> but I, I mean, do you slam just despite it? Oh, this mana ref is insane. Do you have to coin into shield, mate? No. Oh, no, it's, oh, oh, it it's a counter, counter spell. spell. Good sequencing there. Um, so just tank that there. You might have. Isn't it even better just. 
keeping the slam for next turn because it dies to the whirlwind effect anyway. Uh, no, you can't. Oh, you're taking too much damage, yeah. So, this. Uh, oh, what is it? Oh, oh, yo, 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 yo. Oh, nice! That's a pretty good card right now. Aye. Mukla's champion. Gives Bananas for minutes, everybody. Plus one, plus one. It's a five mana 4 3 if you play it without unstable portal. So, really hard to play without. Like, it costs seven mana to play it with zero power. So, usually. Quite slow, but if you get it off unstable portal, isn't it pretty funny how unstable portal makes bad cards good? <laughs> I mean, come on. Yes, because a lot of cards <laughs> have good value, but in order to get the value, you need to play other stuff the same turn. Yeah. And by playing unstable portal, you can just invest mana earlier to then play it in combination with other cards. So a lot of the cards get better by getting yeah. them off unstable portal. Oh my god. Well, that yeah. wasn't a mana burn. Oh man, it's like, wow, I didn't set like 6 on the tempo mage. It's like a huge surprise and might give him the edge in the series, right? Yeah. I, I mean, wow. It's like such a huge difference. Like, freeze mage would have just lost that, but tempo mage crushes the warrior. Also, because it was the first match and Cypher couldn't have known it's mm -hmm. tempo mage, it means that purple still had a better um, read on the. First game, the blind pick. So we got purple with uh, mage here again, and the priest, and Cypher has the priest left. That also means that Cypher has quite a better matchup with a priest, because priest tends to be really good against tempo mage. And the best part is, if he manages to win this game as a priest, we see a priest mirror to uh, just finish the match. Is there any matchup you'd get more excited for than a priest mirror? No, oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> like on 80 of them? Oh my god, I think Priest Mirror is like one of the weirdest mirrors in the whole game, right? Um, this Priest Curve seems really solid. Um, I like how what what um, six uh, what uh, Purple is doing there. Um, he's just keeping the coin with for the Flame Waker, and that's how I like to play this matchup. He's going for the board here, oh, or for the Sorcerer. Like yeah, yeah, now you get the tempo advantage over the. Actually, don't really understand this play because. If your plan was to do that, you might as well just coin force board last turn and play soccer by this turn mm -hmm. to just save two HP. I mean, you don't know what priest is going to do in turn two, so there might be stuff that changes your mind. But I guess you don't really care about two damage regardless. And the Twilight Guardian seems like really strong here. The problem we have now, that flame can and flame wake on the board. Yeah, but the issue is that if he uses flame can, he doesn't have use for the rest of his mana. So oh. There's a fireball. Where, what's, what's the problem, Sixo? That's a pretty good card to play right now. Yeah. But you could also play Arcane Intellect, make it draw a cane missile, and then just missile the three six down. Oh yeah. Uh, but you can't. Uh? You can. You yeah. Get yeah. seven missiles. Only six have to hit. Uh, so here, Vol'jin or not? I think Vol'jin, right? Maybe Drake is better right now. It's tough, right? I mean, with the Vol'jin, the, um, the thing you do, you set up for the um, Blackwing Corruptor. Actually, yeah. Uh, right, you can't play the Drake because then you have no Dragon left in your hand. Yeah. Well. Yeah. My favorite part about the Vol'jin is can you imagine the next expansion when you play Fawn Spirit and then Vol'jin? What? What? Get, he gets just up. Get what happened? Nothing happens. Right? Yeah. What the just fuck? Just <laughs> <X2. laughs> <laughs> Just one just, just, <laughs> just randomly? Oh, oh my god. Um, the problem here is for the priest. Um, uh, the the temple mage is removing threats too efficient here, and the Sorcerer's apprentice here is like about the top best top deck because he gets to play a free two. Yeah. Alongside with the spells, this is really good. It's really and efficient. You see him play Flame Cannon first instead of playing the Intellect first, just to guarantee that all juggles of the Flame Breaker go face. If you play Intellect first, you might just miss one or two damage. Mm -hmm. I like this. Um, keep the Light Bomb alongside with the Power Shield. Yeah, that's nice. Um, the Priest. Cycles his deck with the power shields as well. Um, it is pretty much an open game, but I think um, Purple has a, the edge at the moment because he's removing and cycling so efficient. Hmm. I kind of disagree. I think that the light bomb in Cypher Sand makes a huge difference this game. 
but he might just die too early before he gets enough yeah. value. That might Maybe be you're correct on that. So, you might see a light bomb, but then we'll see power shield first. How sad are you? They don't have a Nova. Just you would trade into the Shredder first, then Nova heal, most likely kill three minions, and still have mana for your hero power. Yeah, Nova would be like really good here. I, I don't know if you can afford to light bomb just now. Oh, that makes Nova even better. <laughs> you might just... I think just play Northshire, trade into the Shredder, and make your opponent concede before he realizes you don't have Holy Nova in your hand. The question is how greedy one you want to play as the priest here. The problem is you c give up your board, right? You might... Yeah, you light bomb first. I agree on that. And you keep the 5-3. That is pretty nice. He runs counter spell and... If this is a counter spell... It is a counter spell. Like, most yeah. likely. We saw a counter spell last time. We see it in the sand. So, oh. if you would have played the Antoniders... <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. No, no, it's not a counter spell. Just cycle through. Okay, oh, so he has three secrets in the stack. Mm -hmm. um, Northshire, that's fine then. That's pretty good. Yeah, and now we just played a Twilight Guardian to protect your health. Yeah, I guess it's quite good because if your opponent somehow situates his own Drake into it, you can then finish the other Drake off with your cleric. Mm -hmm. Seems good. Um, the problem for the priest is like he's getting he's lo kind of low on health because mage has quite good burn cards. Uh, yeah, his hand is kind of weird. It's like, does he really have time to play your Zara? Yeah. Shadow the double shadow death does nothing. I mean, we might just stand Antonidas missiles here. Just drop the Antonidas and where is the fireball? You yeah, I think Antonidas missiles next time you have double fireball. You just yeah. go all face. That's how it works in Hearthstone. <laughs> Faces the place. Let's see if the missiles agree with us. Just go off face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Drake hits face, Morg. Um, he doesn't have quite lethal, and the Shadow of Death will help. Oh, that's actually a pretty good card to get right now. So you trade the Azure Drake, Shadow of Death to Tony. And actually, I think it's Twilight Guardian. No, that I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to put Twilight Guardian here, like. Oh. That's so green. Yeah, Twilight Guardian. Hmm. Actually, on the other hand, you know the opponent has a fireball. So you know he has an answer to the Twilight Guardian. That's, that's true. I mean, uh, but but you miss health. Uh, officially free health. Okay, I hope you just see it. Like, Arcane Missiles for a 50 50 lethal. Oh, that's such a good card, as you Drake Bear. Just to cycle the deck again. Yeah, it's a trade efficiently into the 5 4. Mirror Entity. Okay. Cypher always saw an entity, and last game he saw a counter spell. So, from his perspective, it most likely is a counter spell. So, <laughs> maybe he plays the server. It's true, right? Yeah, but uh, uh, he knows he has a fireball in the hand, so the Yisera doesn't mm. quite make sense. Uh, if okay. he plays the Yisera here, this game is anyways over. Uh, so, you probably want to play the Twilight Guardian. The question is just how you secret it, because uh, once you play it, the battle cry triggers before mirror entity, so his opponent Twilight Guardian will also get taunt, which means then he couldn't trade anymore. Okay, so what, what do you think of it? Bit crazy, like you play a Twilight Guardian, bu buff the opponent's Twilight Guardian, Shadow or Death it, <laughs> and then trade. <laughs> yeah, I think we hear what, what he just did. Um, just buff this up. Do you? I think you have to kill the spell power also. Right? actually, I'm not sure if he. Um, expected three secrets, or if he just wasn't sure how to secret it because. From the first perspective, it looked like there two secrets in this opponent's deck. One is Counterspell, one is Entity. Just from the last game. So if he would have expected Counterspell, the best play would have probably been to Shadow World Death his own 5-4 at the start of the turn to proc the Counterspell and then play Valence Chosen. <laughs> but... So here we go. It is... That's lethal. That's lethal, right? Yeah. The fireball. With a double buff on your mana worm, it should be exactly so. And the Tempo Mage delivers here. Yeah, that's a 3 1 win for Purple. Choosing the Tempo Mage over the Freeze Mage gives Purple the edge in the series. Really nice, well played. So, do we know who won the other match? The other match was Firebat against Martin Creek. Yeah. So, Firebat won that and is going to play against Purple Drank in the winner match. Yeah. So. Full Archon match, 
full arc on Matt. Oi. I like to see that. Seems good. In recent tournaments, ex Arcon players have been doing quite good against. You mean yourself, current right? Current Arcon players. <laughs> well, Perpetrack <laughs> also won against Delay in the North American Piscon qualifier. Yeah. So it's not just myself, it's also Purple. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a break. The next match is coming up shortly. I think it will be the winner's match first. So stay tuned. <laughs> 